Hello folks. There have been some questions and some comments um, on my web page and on the uh, YouTube channel about you know how I how I travel with uh, Aquila and the car and what I carry in it so I thought I'd do a fairly quick video um, of just uh, my gear and equipment and, and how I set up the car. Um, as you know I drive a uh, Toyota 4Runner it's uh, one of the few vehicles I found that had uh, enough room in the back for the dog to be very comfortable, actually two dogs, to be very comfortable and uh, not get the whole car all covered in dog hair and mud. So let me show you how I do that. I did buy a, a car liner, a, a back liner for the car. It's supposed to be made for the 4Runner. It doesn't work very good, but it does it does do a job with mud. It does keep the mud from getting all over the place. But on the seats themselves, I have a fitted, a fitted sheet and I set that over the top of the seats so that it doesn't have any possibility of him drooling over the, over the seats and onto the, the And the reason I use a fitted sheet, as you can see, it actually goes over the top of the seat and curls around so that it doesn't, it, it protects the top of the seat as much as this, um, this matting stuff does. The whole seats inside are covered up by that fitted sheet that goes all the way down to the floor and all the dirt and, and everything that floats from Aquila forward pretty much is trapped in that back seat and that's really nice that that back seat this, just bring this up and over There now that's pushed in there. It's up over the seats, so it 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 uh, protects the seats. Uh, technically, this is supposed to have sides that go up on the uh, up here like this. I haven't been able to figure out how to get them to stay up there. They just fall down, and so I just tuck them under. So this strap goes around the seats. And then this kind of, you just, I just uh, wrap this around it. This would normally go over the headrests, but I want it over the top so that it protects the top of the seats so he can't chew on them or anything like that. So this is really nice. Um, and this is what the seats look like inside. As I said, you can't really get to the seat belt. And then all the, uh, all the recovery gear and all my other equipment just sits on the back seat because I don't have anybody to Ride with me. So the other thing I carry in my car is I carry recovery gear. As you may have noticed, the front of my car has a winch on it now. I put that on myself. I got a video I can put up here and show you. Um, it's an easy, it's really an easy install. Um, I was surprised. It weighs a little bit, so it takes, it may take some ingenuity with a jack or a friend to help hold it up. But, um, when you have a winch, you can't just use a winch by itself. It requires a lot of extra gear. So I have a uh, recovery kit and I'll show you what I carry in that. Hang on. This currently is my recovery kit. It all fits in this one tactical duffel bag that cost me a, a few dollars, but um, it was supposed to be a very good thing. It's already fallen apart because it weighs about 45, 50 pounds. But in the recovery kit, I carry a set of gloves for pulling out the winch and digging out rocks and stuff like that. I carry a very long snatch strap 
And these are not really what you might think they are. They're not that great for yanking people out of places. They're really for towing more than anything else. Um, this is 30 feet and it's got a twisted end on it so that it doesn't snap as bad. But um, I've had this forever. I've never actually used it, um, but I put it in the recovery kit. I have a, a band to go around a tree. If I'm gonna use my winch, I might have to, uh, you know, I might have to hook up to a tree and to not harm the tree, you get a tree saver strap that goes around the tree and uh, you can use the winch to pull you out and it doesn't hurt the tree. And this will go around about a 15 foot wide tree. So it's a pretty, pretty big strap. They make them smaller, but you know, you don't want to find that your strap isn't big enough. And then I carry some, some, uh, what are these called? Shackles. Shackles to hook up to the car or the hook or whatever. I haven't opened these up yet, but they're, they're in the plastic bag. There's two of them in here. And these, these are probably the heaviest thing in the whole kit. And then I've got some other gloves just in case I have a helper that needs to, to help me. And then I have a, a snatch block, which is a, it's a pulley that gives you a little extra, um, gives you extra pull. And this is an easy hookup. And again, you, you put the shackle in there and hook it up to your car or whatever, but that means the rope, if you have to go around a corner or, or pull from over the side and you want to pull toward the middle, this is nice. What else do I have in here? <laughs> of, of course, I have the remote to the winch, which my winch is wireless. Um, this has a little battery in it that um, will uh, work the winch. So I have that, but in case the battery goes dead, I do have the cord. <laughs> I, I can wire it up and use the cord. So that's in the, the thing. And one of the things that I do is that I, when I need the back seats, I take this recovery system out because that's where it sits. And uh, I'm, that means I don't have the winch handle. So I'm gonna have to find a better place to put this than in this, in this system. This is a uh, thing for the winch. You put this over the winch cable if you're gonna go over a rock or a log or anything so it doesn't uh, harm the winch cable. Um, again, more stuff. Moment, uh, that's all I have in the recovery bag. Uh, I'm gonna get some more, but the stuff's very expensive. Um, right now, all I'm really worried about is uh, being alone in the on the trail and being stuck somewhere, <laughs> not being able to get unstuck. So the winch hopefully will pull me out. Or if I get the trailer stuck or the trailer slides off a, off a road onto a ditch or something, I can pull the trailer out with the winch, which is uh, another reason I got it. But all of this stuff, of course, um, will be listed down below in the description as a link to Amazon where you can buy it if you're interested you want to look at it closer to see what the stats are on it, the specs. Um, or it'll also be on my web page. If you haven't been to my web page, um, visit the web page. So that's the main recovery gear. And then of course, I also have my Viair air compressor to fill up the tires. I do uh, take the tires down to 20 pounds, 18 to 20 pounds if I'm on a really bumpy a uh, rock covered road, it gives me better traction, better uh, smoother ride. So I, I carry this in the back seat too. And this is, it, this is amazing how fast this um, fills up my tires. This bag is not the bag for the, the, the air compressor I bought. Uh, my compressor just had a pocket up front for the uh, hose. This bag comes with another Viair compressor and it has a pocket in the back. And in the back, I carry the deflators and for uh, four wheel. And these are the deflators I use. They're just, 
you just screw these on your screw these on your tire valve and it lets the air out to a set amount. I've got them set for 20 pounds, but depending on the cold and the heat, they may be down to 18. But it's a nice ride anyways, but I had to pay I had to pay 50 bucks for this extra bag. I called Vier and said, "Hey, I I see you've got a bag with two pockets, one in the front, one in the back. I want that bag." And they sold it to me for just 20 bucks. But the shipping on it was another $20. So <laughs> I don't know why it was so expensive to ship this little bag. I mean, when it's down, it's collapsed, it's not much to it, but um, so that's some of the stuff I put in the car. Come here, come here. And then this goes in the car way in the back. This is my recovery animal. What do you say? The other thing I carry in my, uh, this probably should be in the recovery gear, but I carry a, this is a collapsible shovel. And this is really cool. It's got these two little handles, and then it's got the actual shovel. And it's a pretty small little shovel, but it has a, a pick, a shovel, and then a handle just screws on. This is just phenomenal. It screws on, so it's a big, big handled shovel, and you can scrape with it, you can dig with it, um, it has a silly little saw thing on the side. It's actually pretty sharp right at the moment. This is the way I got it off Amazon. Um, and I think it even goes longer than this. But um, you never know when you're going to have to dig your differential out of something. So I've got that. And it all folds up and goes into a little tiny bag. It all goes into this little tiny bag. So I keep a shovel there. And the other thing I've been carrying, I bought a Greenworks 12 inch chainsaw, which is uh, plenty big enough. If, you know, a 12 inch chainsaw will cut 24 inch wide, 24 inch log. And if it's bigger than that, I don't think I want to tackle it. But, um, I've been carrying that because if you've watched my videos um, of some of the places I've been that are game lands or out of, out of the national forest lands, there's trees are over the road all the time and I get stuck. I have to turn around and if I'm pulling the trailer, it's a real bear to turn around on a narrow road. So I now carry that in the car and um, that'll... That, that keeps trees from falling in front of me more than anything else. If I don't have it, I come down roads that are blocked by trees. As long as I've got it, there's never any trees in the road. So that's just the way those things work. I, of course, always carry hiking boots in my car. Um, I usually drive the car with sneakers. And when we get to the trailheads or the camping area, if, um, if it's dry and nice, um, I don't bother wearing hiking boots. Um, I have pretty good ankles. I have no worries with the shoes I wear. I wear decent running shoes. I pay lots of money for them. Don't ask me why they're so expensive, but um, so I don't usually put on hiking boots unless I'm really gonna go a very long ways and my feet are giving me some issues with something or I'm sure that it's gonna be a really hard climb with mud and ice and things like that. What else do we put in the car? Oh, your stuff. Because I've got a kilo with me, I always carry water. And this is a, just a orange juice bottle that I fill with water. I have a RO system, a reverse osmosis system on my sink. So I fill this with water from that and that's just like getting Aquafina. Um, it tastes great. And then we also carry this um, for if he needs water um, in his bowls, he's got uh, food bowls and water bowls in the car. And I have an extra water bowl in case we want to put it outside the car so he can drink. But usually we try to hike where there's going to be some water that he can drink as he's running around. Cause when he's carrying sticks and running back and forth, it's uh, important to get uh, him 
<laughs> to stay hydrated. Um, he doesn't have any way to cool down except for breathing out of his mouth and that uses up a lot of water. So you might also be interested in this just in the car. I've got this box of miscellaneous junk that we always keep with us and in it includes um, these are no these are collars for Aquila and they light up. Um, they flash, you probably can't see it because it's not dark, but they flash or light up. Um, there's a red one and a green one. Um, I bought these for uh, Dakota and Caesar, but um, these are on Amazon and they're cheap. They're like 12 or 15 bucks. Maybe they're 20 bucks now, but um, they're, they're self, uh, they're a battery inside the little controller here and uh, they uh, charge USB. I charge them on my cigarette lighter when we're going someplace and I think I'm going to use them. But it's really nice when you're walking the dog at night to have a lit up collar. I used to hang lights uh, around their neck and it used to confuse people as to what the heck this light was coming towards them. So now with a collar, people really know it's a dog. Um, and of course, there's a, there's a leash that goes with it. There's a, a four foot leash or five foot leash. And again, it uh, has a little switch up on the handle here that makes the whole leash light up. So if I'm walking through a campground at night to go to the bathroom, I can leave him hooked onto a doorknob or something and <laughs> let, let it all flashing. And people know what it is. They won't be surprised. I always carry flashlights. This is a really nice flashlight. Um, I just got this off Amazon a little while ago. It's got, um, it, it zooms. I really like zooming flashlights because it means you can pinpoint the, the, the light better. But, um, and I use these, if, if you haven't noticed, I use these to, as a flash when I'm doing videos. Um, and the new LED flashlights, I'll tell you, just amazing. You know, when I was a kid, we had these great big lantern battery flashlights and um, they hardly did anything. But these new flashlights with LEDs, um, Cray LEDs are just phenomenal. So we carry that. And these are all, I just keep these in the box. And when I get going, I decide what I need. I also carry in my car a tire repair kit. Now this is a cheap tire repair kit from Amazon, but it's got a lot of stuff in it. It can fix four or five tires if they're just got a nail or a screw in them. People often ask me what I do with him about ticks and fleas and, and bugs and things that we pick up in the woods. And I'll tell you, I um, have used canine Advantix extremely successfully in the past. For a small time, um, I was using Revelation because that supposedly is more potent for uh, mange mites and things like that. And it also does worms and stuff. So it's one product covers everything. So, um, however, uh, that's when Caesar got sick. And so I kind of shied away from that. I don't know that I really believe that that's the cause of why he got sick, but um, we're not using Revelation anymore. Um, but one of the things I recently found is that you could buy um, pure permethrins in a spray bottle. And it, this is for clothing and gear. You spray it on your clothes, let it dry, and it works for three to six weeks to keep the mosquitoes and ticks and stuff away from you. And I've had incredible success with this. This is really good. You can also spray it on your dog. You just got to keep it away from your cat. Once it's dry, I guess it's safe to have like the cat lick or chew on the dog. <laughs> but um, it doesn't hurt the dog, but it's, um, it's supposed to work up to three weeks on a dog. It's supposed to work six weeks on your clothes, even if you wash them two or three times. Anyways, but this is a really neat product. This is on Amazon. It, there's a couple of different products. Let me show you the other product. This is the other product. And uh, this uh, is what I'll put on the uh, link below 
and on my web page. Um, this, this does um, a jacket, a vest, a shirt, um, pants, socks, shoes in one bottle. And I mean, I'm talking about soaking them wet, um, spraying them. It comes with a sprayer. This is my third bottle. It comes with a sprayer and you put it in there and you just spray your clothes until they're completely damp. And this is amazing how well this works. Um, you want to give it 12 hours to dry. You don't want to get it on you. It's not good to get in your skin. But, um, you know, this is great. Uh, off, cutters, all the insect repellents. I wouldn't put any of those on my skin for anything. I'd rather trust the uh, insects to bite me. But um, this, is, this is new and it's, and it's phenomenal. Um, inside my car, I've been trying to figure out how to do uh, mounting things for things like cell phones and tablets and things like that. And most of the YouTube channels have RAM mounts, which is a great big pedestal mount thing that hangs out over here. And I have decided that that's crazy. Um, it just takes up too much room and they're expensive as all get out. So I've been buying these things. These are little magnetic things that glue onto your dashboard anywhere you want. And you can see I've got this one here. It's, it's, it's uh, stuck here with two-sided tape and it's not going any place. And this is rounded no less. I mean, this is a real nice, it, it bends to, to, to stay on there. And I had a little pressure test on it and it is fine for the, uh, for the cell phone. And then I'm gonna put this one over here for the tablet. And again, these are on swivels. And again, I'll put these on the web page because these are just phenomenal. Um, I imagine, you know, if you wanna put them on there and take them off, that uh, you just use a little uh, adhesive remover and they'll come right off. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. I'm gonna put it right here and boom. You've got a place to put a tablet or a phone or whatever. So, and that doesn't, isn't obnoxious as those great big things coming out of the console and everything else. So, how's that? If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you have comments, let me know what you think. Um, do, you, do you carry other stuff? What do you carry when you go hiking? We'll be out on the trail in a minute and maybe we'll add some of that to this video. So stay tuned till the very end and we'll see what gets on the end.